I'm uh, Seiji Mineto from IBM Research Tokyo, and uh, today I'll talk about uh, our smallest risk five device for next generation age computing like this. And uh, uh, two people in uh, Research Tokyo is working on the logic and the software development side, and uh, two people in uh, Watson Research Center working on the analog circuit design and uh, physical uh, design things. So. Uh, first, uh, I will show about some background of the, our project, and uh, uh, I think uh, most people know about uh, uh, when we moving the advanced node, uh, transistors are getting cheaper. So uh, people using uh, same die size for the particular platforms, so uh, then they increasing the size of num sorry number of the transistor, so getting much more power. But uh, uh, recently, uh, the gate cost is uh, saturated. So uh, that means that uh, to get the cheap device, we need to reduce the number of the transistors. So uh, our target is uh, like that. So uh, the size is uh, similar to the RFID chip, but uh, we want to implement uh, uh, like embedded processor things in this area. So uh, to make a processor for this purpose, uh, we need to figure out uh, uh, application workload to, to running on this. So uh, first target, we decided to run the, some authentication for the, doing some demonstration. And uh, we choosing uh, SHA-256 based uh, uh, HMAC and some variant based on the shared secret. And uh, to do the authentication, we need a communication between that device and the outside. So uh, we cannot using the wired communication because the device is too small. So we, uh, we need to use uh, some wireless communication. And this time, uh, our laboratory has uh, some micro LED device and the micro PV uh, photovoltaic and the photo detector diode devices, so we want to use this device, and uh, so, so we choose the optical interface. And the protocol is based on the simple UART, and uh, we're using HDLC frame to check the error of the communication, and uh, uh, we are using custom payload. And uh, to, to make a computer, we need a storage devices to store the code, but uh, when we started the project, there are no good devices, so uh, we use the SRAM to emulate uh, this kind of storage device. So the boot ROM, uh, we are, uh, the, the one of the problem with the device is uh, must be uh, tested with the, uh, let's say, processor itself, so that we need to uh, implement uh, uh, some boot loader which supporting uh, uploading the new application to the storage memory and uh, is the execution, execute application from the storage memory. And also, uh, we want to support device authentication by bootroom itself. So uh, this is our first generation processor, and uh, uh, the top picture shows about the uh, layout of the processor, and the second picture shows about the uh, integrated devices. And uh, our processor, uh, the size is uh, 300 micron by 250 micron. Uh, we are using 14 nanometer technology. And the uh, SOC architecture is uh, based on the Parvino, uh, so that we are using 32 bit core. And uh, on chip memory, we reduced to the 2 kilobyte data SRAM only. And uh, in addition, we put in authentication engine for to do a much more faster SHA calculation. And uh, we also put in analog custom circuit to supporting power supply and uh, clock and reset generation and uh, PD and LED drivers. And uh, uh, 2.5D uh, integrated device, uh, we are using silicon interposer. The size is uh, below one millimeter square. And uh, we are using a 2NT micron bump so that we have a lot of the, uh, we can do the much more connection between the devices. And uh, processor so we put in the processor SOC and uh, SRAM and the optical component on the silicon interposer. So uh, to make this device, uh, first, uh, uh, sorry, uh, first I show about uh, just briefly about original Palpino overview, and uh, it's using 232 kilobyte uh, SRAM for instruction side and uh, dead side, but. Uh, uh, so the total is 64 kilobyte SRAM. The size is uh, 0.06 millimeter square in 
16 nanometer, uh, sorry, 14 nanometer technology. So that this is uh, too big. So that we want to reduce uh, this memory size. So uh, first, uh, we are using FPGA, uh, common with the serial FPGA board to evaluate the system. And uh, first, uh, uh, Palafino is uh, using Z board, which is uh, $450. And uh, first, we're using, uh, evaluating the, this uh, Palafino system by using this board. But uh, uh, we found that Zebo, which is uh, $200, so that we migrate to the Zebo. And uh, the reason why they are using uh, Zinc platform is that they need a uh, ARM core to, to write a, a code to the uh, device so that we, after we finish the bootloader uh, code, uh, we eliminate the ARM core so that now uh, the system is running on the RT. Uh, it is uh, maybe $99, so cheap. So uh, by using this FPG platform, uh, we evaluate uh, several choices. So uh, first, uh, we reduce the on-chip memory size. So the original has uh, 32 kilobytes data and 32 kilobyte instruction, and uh, uh, the code is stored in external uh, flash memory. So we uh, eliminate the four uh, instruction memory and uh, move to the outside, and uh, uh, reduce the data SRAM to the two kilobyte. Uh, to, to be uh, this size, we evaluate several applications, and uh, two kilobytes is the minimum requirement to run the application. So uh, by uh, eliminating the instruction SRAM to the outside, the problem is the uh, uh, bandwidth between the processor and the uh, SRAM. So uh, initially, we are using 4-bit bus. So actually, this is a quad SPI bus. But the quad SPI bus is a very slow, so that we extend uh, data videos to the 8-bit and 60-bit and 32-bit. So getting much more faster than uh, we expected. So uh, we tested the uh, performance. And as we expected, uh, 4 bit is very slow without the cache on the memory uh, processor side. So uh, 8 bit and uh, six, uh, 16 bit, 32 bit are getting improved. But uh, there are another physical constraint. So that in case of the 20 micron uh, bump, uh, the SRAM only has a 30 uh, pins. So uh, we cannot use a 32-bit bus. And uh, of course, we can use a 16-bit bus, but uh, uh, we are worried about the yield of the integration so, and the power, sub power consumption, so that we choose the 8-bit bus in these cases. So another problem is a uh, uh, SHA-206 execution. And uh, in case of the software implementation, it takes uh, maybe six or seven kilobytes. It contains uh, uh, many random numbers here. So, but, uh, uh, so we try to implement uh, SHA-256, SHA uh, so, sorry, <coughs> 46 by the hardware. So uh, with, uh, so is also supporting HMAC and uh, business network is uh, another things. And uh, the FPGA side is uh, maybe 30% increased, but the performance uh, is uh, 20, almost uh, 20 times faster. So that we choose the uh, hardware uh, engine for the SHA execution. So uh, this is the background why we choose uh, this uh, configuration. So uh, this is the final uh, architecture of the, our chip. And then we blue line is the uh, execution path of the, our uh, code. And the code is stored in the external uh, SRAM. And uh, uh, it executed by the uh, core itself through the XIP. And uh, we also adding uh, another component. And uh, UART is uh, uh, derived by the uh, PD and LED things. And uh, we have the external micro LED and the micro PD and the micro uh, PV cells, which generating one volt for the processor and the three volt for the LED driving. So uh, this is our actual chip. Uh, I show about the uh, left side is uh, our processor die, uh, which using point, uh, zero 0.07. Uh, millimeter square, and the SRAM die, this is a 32 kilobyte, uh, it takes a 0 
uh, micron square, a mil sorry, this is a millimeter square. And, uh, but uh, we want to make uh, this kind of integration using these dice, but uh, uh, devices are too small and uh, not easy to debug, do, doing a debug things. So that we also created another configuration which contains a, a processor and a SRAM, and these two guys are connected in the, this die. And the outside, we put in a uh, normal wire bonding part to, testing, uh, to do the testing. So uh, this is a, a testing of the debug die. And uh, first, we dice in out of this debug, sorry, debug die and uh, packaged. Then uh, we tested it on the PCB board, and uh, it booted. And uh, we also tested the application upload and run. It also works. So the, our silicon is a uh, fast silicon, sorry, <coughs> our fast silicon is uh, uh, successfully uh, working. Oh. So now uh, we are doing uh, 2.5D integration. So the, to, to do the simulation, we are using etching. So the, uh, taking uh, each pieces. And uh, after that, we put in on the uh, like silicon interposer like this, and uh, uh, testing on the probe station. And the uh, processor itself is uh, booted on the silicon interposer. So yeah, now uh, we are working on the other component, integration with the other component. So uh, this is a summary of the processor specification. And uh, our, we are based on the Palpino uh, SOC system. And we reduce the uh, size. And uh, we reduce the SRAM size also. And the uh, boot ROM code is uh, uh, really increased by supporting rational function. And uh, yeah, so the, uh, we are supporting uh, 100 megahertz. Uh, this is by internal ring oscillator. So uh, conclusion and the future plan, and uh, our first generation device is uh, under full evaluation. So the target application is authentication, and the uh, uh, preliminary tests show the functionality of the device. And uh, uh, we also are developing a second generation device uh, was tapered out uh, last February. And uh, this new device uh, is uh, targeting IoT and the blockchain things, so that it has a much more memory and also supporting uh, instruction cache to, to run much faster. And also, it supports RF radio interface and uh, some sensor interface. And uh, we are also now thinking about uh, uh, third generation devices. Uh, maybe we have uh, some non volatile memory device, so that much more easy to do some practical demonstration. Uh, or we are using this five core. So uh, last slide show about uh, some uh, working example of the micro LED. So the, uh, unfortunately, we do not have the PV cell yet. So the first, maybe soon uh, we will get uh, some actual uh, fully integrated device and uh, show much, much more fancy video will be available. Thank you. It's uh, Luca Benini from uh, ETH Zuri. Uh, so th first of all, thanks for using Palpino. And yeah. uh, second, uh, what is the, um, it's more a technology uh, question. Do you see a value for uh, such a advanced technology yeah. for a, a small core like Palpino? What would be the, the value in terms of cost and in terms of market? Yeah, so, uh, the biggest problem is the uh, uh, path, so the I.O. to the device. So the RFID chip only needs two paths. But uh, to, for the general computing processor, we need uh, maybe 10 or much more paths. So, uh, so the, our main purpose is that we, need, we want to develop the, some technology which providing the, this kind of the, uh, tiny integration and uh, of course, um, much more cheaper cost. That is our actual challenges. But uh, uh, to, to do the such kind of integration, we need a working uh, processor. So this is the first one for that. <laughs>